Hey everyone, Sir Agna here. Welcome to another video. In today's video, I'm showing a different army that doesn't need the super wizards at all. In this army, I'm using the super giants, and instead of the wizards, I'm bringing five yetis, which are also quite strong. And in the CC, instead of the wizard blimp, I'm bringing the traditional yeti blimp. This is perfect for people that don't have clan members that can donate the super wizards, so in this occasion we're using the yetis instead. In terms of spells, I bring three rages, a jump, a freeze, a poison and an invisibility spell, however you can change the invisibility spell for another freeze. And if you don't have super wall breakers like I do on this occasion and you are not too confident with the normal wall breakers, you can change a rage for a second jump so that your troops can move around the base nice and quick. So let's go to the replays. Okay, so here's the first attack I'm going against this uh, Asian player. So I put the warden uh, at 3 o'clock just to do a warden walk, send the blimp into the town hall at the moment. In the current meta, the town halls aren't very uh, extremely protected. Uh, sometimes they are, but I've found that most of the time they're not. I'm um, putting the warden walk, but you can also use a queen walk, a queen charge. Uh, it really depends on your skills. That's what I like about this army, that you can really interchange and do whatever you want to do. As you can see, I use the invisibility spell for the warden so that the single doesn't kill him. And with the king and witches at 6 o'clock, just to create the other side of the funnel. Then I sent my main army in, which is all the giants and the yetis with the super wall breakers just to open some of the walls there and just make sure that they do walk inside into the center of the base. As you can see, this base is quite open, so it really doesn't matter, but in bases where it's nice and shut, then the super wall breakers do come in clutch. I put the jump just so that they can get out of that compartment into the center of the base, and if they want to and go for the single inferno, then that would be money. Now I've got the king and the yetis with the super giants in the center of the base, put the last rage there, I still have my king ability, my queen ability, my RC, use the freeze for that single inferno just to make sure that my RC doesn't go down and the next inferno is a multi inferno so um, it was a perfect place to put the freeze. Now the queen is about to die, now she dies, I still have the RC with ability, there's still a lot of super giants alive, the king is with the yetis just uh, making sure to get rid of some of the other buildings. The super giants finally get inside, they're gonna be able to get rid of the multi inferno while my king is killing the enemy roller champion and she was being tanked by the giants. Now these giants are really good for tanking, really good to go through walls and the good thing about the yetis as well is that they're also quite tanky and uh, with the yeti mice they can just go and fly and get rid of some defenses. So I found that the change between wizards and yetis it can be actually pretty strong. Over here this other legend base I put the warden at 3 o'clock as well just to create a bit of pathing, send my plane back in for the town hall. That hole will go down. I put the rage down there. Now, if the ta if the blimp is going into an area where it, there's not gonna be much splash damage or no heroes, for example, you don't really have to use the rage there, and then you can use that rage for your warden walk. It really is up to you. So now that I've gotten rid of that 12 o'clock area, apart from the heroes, I put my king and witches around 1 o'clock just to create the other side of the funnel and then I send my super wall breaker just to open the wall so that my uh, troops can start walking inside. Put the poison down for the CC and uh, I use the warning ability nice and early. So now I've got a group uh, going to the center of the base, another group going around the, the ring of the base and the royal champion going around the exterior of the base. So pretty much going into three different layers, the queen now is finally going to be walking in. I did put the jump there in the center of the base, which actually opens up everything for my troops to walk around. We still have quite a few giants. We have um, all of our healers on a yeti and one healer, which is the only smart one going into with uh, super giants. So thanks healers for helping us out, but that's all right. We're not going to need them anymore. My queen is gonna be getting rid of the scatter show, then I pop her ability, she can get rid of the expo. And now with the Royal Champ ability, all of the defenses go down, so now it's just clean up. My queen being uh, smart goes towards the enemy queen, she gets killed, but the Royal Champion ends up clearing everything else, and this was a nice triple. 
Now we've got this one again stabbed off. So the next two are actually quite similar bases, but on this one, the air defenses are on the outside, and all of the infernos are on this uh, left hand side. Uh, you'll see the other base in a second. So on this one, I send the plane just to get rid of the single inferno and start my um, queen walk. Put the king with the witches at six. And then I send all my super giants with yetis into that middle compartment with the jump, making sure so that they walk in an anti clockwise formation. And also so that some of them do go into the town hall. I wanted them to walk that way so that they can get rid of the eagle as soon as they can. And also the CC. So the CC comes out, put the poison down. Whenever you're coming in with a spam attack like this one, like yetis and super giants, uh, super minions really do nothing to your um, to your army as long as you bring a poison. If you don't have a poison, then yeah, they they can make a, quite a fair bit of damage. But with that with the poison they really don't do much so for all of you that hate super minions in cc's just coming with spam nice and easy now i have the royal champion at three o'clock with the rest of the army there as well they're going to be the super giants are going to be able to beat through the wall and then the rest of the army is going to be able to follow them and follow the royal champion and just keep getting rid of some of the defenses here the queen gets rid of the scatter shot the air is going inside the super giants are still going in there i think um what's that so the single inferno was hitting my king so that's why i put the invisibility spell there just to make sure that give a few seconds for my king and my super chance to be through the wall so they can get into that single inferno compartment they can bring it down nice and quick and now the rest of my super chance is hitting on the last wall for the defenses we only have the expo the quiz tower and the mora that's gonna go down and this was a nice triple so the next base is um, a bit similar to this one as well but uh, as you can see the infernos are in different uh, placements and also the ADs as well. So I start with my wooden walk at six. So because of the different placements, that's why I decided to come in differently. So I send my blimp into the eagle and the CC. I put the poison down. Usually with the yetis there, they can tag the super minions to stay in that poison just long enough that it kills them nice and quick. As you can see, they all went down and now I've got uh, the rage that I can use with my warden because I didn't use a rage with the, my uh, blimp and uh, That way my one can get rid of this expo once that expo goes down I start everything else so I put a yeti to follow my king and Which is to walk down to three and then they're gonna be walking down to four Put my queen to pull the warden the giants the yetis and then I start sending two of my super wall breakers one for three o'clock compartment the other one for the uh, one next door and then I put my jump there just to make sure that they walk towards the left and then just start going in the clockwise formation as well. Pretty much exactly the same that I did with the previous base where I'm allowing them to continue walking but I am also allowing um, whoever wants to go into the center to go for the tank hole, they can go for the tank hole as well. So usually the Yetis will go there, the super giants because the tank hole wasn't activated, they just uh, bypassed it. Which is fine, they can still tank the defenses that are around the wing. And then I had my Royal Champion from 12 just getting rid of some of the defenses up there. Now I put Invisibility Spell on my Royal Champ because I thought it was going to be quite a fair bit of value for her to get rid of that scatter shot, which she manages to, to do just in time. And that's going to help my army quite a fair bit. Now they've all walked outside, but there's only two compartments left. And since there's no more defenses on the outside, they giants are going to be beating through the wall they're going to go inside into the nano clock compartment and then they're going to beat through the wall to go into the multi inferno compartment and as i said they're pretty tanky i was looking at the hps of the super giants and pretty much they're just over half the hp of a golem and they're only 10 troop space a golem is 30 troop space so you can bring three super giants for the value of one golem and they also go through walls like crazy and just like golems they also attack defenses so i believe that um, in all of those armies where you see the golems if you just swap the golem for three super giants i think is it's a lot better and the only time that i wouldn't use the super giants is because you want to bring another two different super troops but um most of the time i would just use the super giants so in this base again 
we're going inside into the center of the base. Now on this occasion I didn't use the blimp to go directly into the town hall basically because the town hall is just directly on the outside so I didn't see any value on that. So I'm sending it from behind. Now I did plan to send the blimp for the town hall however you'll see it in a second so I use my warden ability. It continues flying, continues flying, the CC comes out, everything is being tanked, all the expos are there, the tornado trap picks my blimp. So then it goes down, so I decided to put the rage there, at least if it gets a couple of um, expos, the shetties, it will still help me out. And if they get rid of those defenses, then as my troops walk around the base, they will be able to get to the town hall eventually. So it wasn't... It wasn't extremely bad, but yeah, obviously I wanted my blimp to get all the way to the tank hall. It almost made it, but not yet. So now I've got the Royal Champ with ability, the, the Queen with ability, and the Super Giants are there as well. And we still have our invisibility spell, so I put it there just to give my Giants enough time to go through the wall. Our Royal Champ enough time to damage the tank hall enough, and then the tank hall goes down. So as you can see, I've said before that you can change the invisibility spell for a free spell. However, I do believe that the invisibility spell in all of these replays that I've shown you played an important part on all of those attacks. So that's why I prefer bringing an invisibility spell over the free spell. Here we've got the last one I think it is and I thought that there was going to be quite a fair bit of value here with the four expos and the uh, eagle. So I decided to put the reg there with my blimp and I managed to get two experts and the eagle and damage the king to half health while my warden was uh, making a funnel at 3 o'clock. Now I do suggest that if you're going to be doing a warden walk on the base to start your warden walk as soon as you can before you send the blimp otherwise you're going to be time failing. Over here as well, instead of using a rage for my warden, I decided to use the freeze on the warden statue. If you have your warden going against the warden statue, it's uh, 9 times out of 10 and probably 9.9 .9 times out of 10, the warden statue somehow is way stronger than your warden, so it will always die even though the healers are healing him back up. So now, so yeah, you have to freeze or put a rage on your warden or something like that if you're going against the warden statue. Now we've got uh, the troops going inside the base. The AD was hitting my healer, so that's why I decided to use the warden ability. And I put the jump there just to make sure that my troops went inside the town hall. However, they seem to be bypassing it. So now the queen gets rid of the whiz tower. Probably I should have saved my royal champion there since uh, everything is walking around. However, the king decides to be smart and goes inside. And at the same time, I put the invisibility spell for the royal champ and the queen just to make sure that both of them were still healthy with abilities. The king does manage to get the temple down, which is good for me. And now I'm just going to be able to use the RC ability, damage more defenses there. She's going to be able to get the cannon, the archer tower, while the queen is being distracted by the air skellies. We still have the king alive and the warden just uh, getting rid of the buildings at 9 o'clock. The RC does go down, but now we have the queen and she has her ability. So I use it here, the single inferno goes down and this was good. As you can see the invisibility spell helped me there to not use either of those um, abilities. So that's why I say the invisibility spell is so good. So as you can see this army is quite strong. Uh, you can just give it a go in Legends League, see how you go, let me know in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to click the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time with more Clash. See ya.